Okay, hello there guys and welcome to another video by LNARFAN 4472 uh, Today we're going to be doing another review This time we're going to be doing it on something very very different indeed We're going to be doing it on um, a fairly modern piece of rolling stock This is the Hornby uh, Mark III driving van trailer in Intercity livery That's the R4435 Not that you'll be needing the R4435 because this is extremely rare this is so, 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 so rare. I'm unaware of the amount of units that are produced and that have been sold, but I know for a fact this is absolutely chuffing rare. Now, you guys are probably thinking, uh, I have a steam mirror layout, and you're thinking, why do I have um, you know, a Mark III DVT? Well, basically, um, I've tried my best to convert this into a Mark IV DVT because um, Mr. Intercity82 himself is uh, fitting um, an old Class 91, um, DCC fitting it, and fitting it with um, lights as well. So, I suddenly think to myself, you know, I've got, I've got this old DVT from the 1990s, you know, that's going to need lights as well. Um, and I came to the conclusion that I'm nowhere near experienced enough to do it, and a fitting done by somebody else would be a bit, little bit too expensive. And the tooling is a little bit old as well, so I could do with a complete modern upgrade. And this was the nearest thing I could do to it, because let's face it people, um, shape and size wise, this looks a lot like a Mark IV DVT. Obviously there's differences here and there, but you know, you wouldn't be able to tell the difference. And it is still, let's have a look, if we can... 82, 1, 2, 3. Now, obviously, those numbers would vary between the Mark IV and the Mark III DVTs. Um, but, yeah, this is the closest thing I can get, and I thought, why not? Now, what you're thinking, I mentioned at the beginning of this video that these are actually really, really rare. So, you're thinking, how did I get this um, particular Mark III DVT? Well, before I tell you that, let's get the box open first so, you can have, um, so we can have a closer look. So, it's our traditional Hornby packaging, but with a little bit of a difference much like Bachman, we now have the block of ice as it's famously known. Let's have a look at our instructions here. Just not as large as other instructions but Mark III DVT DCC and accessories fitting instructions and we just have a few diagrams there showing us how to take the body off, you know, fit the DCC chip and so on. So that aside, let's, uh, oh, looks like we have like a sleeve here. Uh, just like a protective sleeve if you like just to keep everything in check we have um, <clears throat> DCC jacket and we have some oh, if you can take that off we have some extra detailing just there so those would be for the front now what these are these are basically um, electrical connections to um, if the DVT was coupling up to say another DVT and it was going to be like a nose to nose train kind of thing then uh, that's what they would connect to the other DVT to transfer the signals from from whichever cab is going to be driving so um, that's pretty much it for accessories for the DVT so let's take this off lift that up and just take it out Okay, there we go. Just move all of this junk to one side. As you can see, it does look very modern, very, very stylish. Traditional British yellow end. I think that's required um, by by law, actually, uh, on on all modern all modern rolling stock. I think. Don't take my word for it. Let's have a look at the front because the front is quite astonishing when it comes to detail. As we can see, we have these very nice rectangular oval sprung loaded buffers. And the detail on the front is just amazing. We have a real three link coupling. Not sure you guys can see that. Let's have a look, have a closer look. Got a real three link coupling. And we've got some very, very, very delicate detailing on the front. And it just looks absolutely fantastic, especially when the unit's coming towards you and it's got lights on. So let's take a look at the side. We've got it's in Intercity Swallow livery, a very, very nice livery, my favourite modern livery 
or like 80s 90s british british rail livery or or whatever we've got some nice detailing on the side there's n no lack of detailing here everything looks like you know you would be able to you would be able to open it and you can not sure you guys can see that because my finger is blocking it but those doors do actually open it's a bit difficult because my, my fat finger in the way but those doors do actually open and it looks fantastic you know if you could pin them open and um, you know prop them open somehow you know go inside and take the spring out and you know make it open at a deeper that would just look absolutely tremendous and it works on works on this side as well let's get a closer look for you guys that's about the best that's the best we're going to get but it's just it's just nice they add little touches like that sometimes it really is nice it, you know it, with the model you know it, it's knowing what's there that counts you know it doesn't matter if you can't see it, it's knowing what's there that really really does matter now i must must point out that yes this unit does have working lights otherwise i wouldn't have got it <laughs> so this unit does have working lights so we've had a look at the side, had a look at the front, let's have a look at the bogey detail. Um, bogeys could do with a little bit more painting on the springs and uh, other places on the roll bars and the, and the airbags and things. But yeah, lacking there a little bit. Undercarriage, once again, is quite lacking in detail. You know, they could have painted some warning stickers on there and things like that. You know, very, very lacking there, which is unfortunate. Same case with the other bogey, very lacking in detail. And then we can move to the back where the detail is restored. Look at that. That looks fantastic. That's the best rear end I've ever seen. <laughs> As we can see, we have some print detail just towards the left of the gangway. I'm not sure if you guys can make that out. I'm just going to move that close in an, in an attempt so that you guys can see that. As you can see, we've got C3. That's... Um, that's to say what routes it can travel on. So this is restricted to um, to main lines and things. C1, which is printed on most of the Mark 1 coaches nowadays, that means they can go anywhere on the rail system. But C3 and C2, and I think there's a C4 as well, means they're very, very restricted in terms of travelling around the British railway system, or national rail system, as we should call it now. Um, we have some doors here. Those do not open. No, those do not open. We have some overhead wire warning stickers. And once again, detail back here. No sprung-loaded buffers back here, unfortunately. But I do plan to remove these buffers as the, as the Mark IV uh, doesn't have any buffers um, at the back. We have a, a knuckle coupler, a fake knuckle coupler. If you guys can see that, we have a fake knuckle coupler just there. And an interesting thing about this unit is we do have a NEM coupling, a NEM 362. So if I just gently lay the unit down and we can take that out, you see? So now we can put any coupling we want in there. Now obviously, I'll have to keep my small tension lock coupling in there and possibly replace it with um, a larger one with a NEM 362 standard, uh, standard plug. Because the Mark IV coaches that I have uh, obviously not very modern and still come equipped with the large tension locks shipped with them um, quite a long time ago so that, that is unfortunate so let's move on to the last part of the model now and let's move on to the front and the the roof uh, front you have to say it's well detailed because it has lights that's just the law in terms of model railways uh, unfortunately we don't have any working windscreen wipers which is a big shame no. come on Hornby we, we really would like things like that as as in as Intercity 82 says sometimes, you know, we want little people walking around inside and, and things like that. But anywho, um, so detail here is quite good. Uh, roof, roof, you wouldn't really expect nothing much to be on there, really. It's just, it's just black. But it's got a nice feel to it. It's got that nice expensive feel to it. And we do have a roof hatch here, you know, in case the driver needs to escape in emergencies. And we do have, like, a little, a little funnel, if you like, just there. Hmm, I don't know if that's like extraction for the driver smoking or just smoke from the electronics or cooling for the electronics even. Anyway, who knows? So you'd be lucky to get your hands on one of these. There are several other DVTs out there. The more common one is the um, uh, the Mark III DVT in Virgin Trains livery. That's quite popular, but this one wasn't really that popular. It was discontinued by Hornby um, pretty much straight after release. So I consider myself fortunate to have this. Now, the way I acquired this particular DVT... Um, I went to Pickering, uh, I think it was for the Spring Steam Gala, and I had and I walked in, 
and I just caught sight of this, you know, it really ca it catched my eye because I liked the swallow livery and I, I thought nothing of it ever again. But then when it came to trying to complete my intercity rake, my class 91 rake, I just suddenly remembered, oh God, there's a Mark III DVT in there. I could really use that. So I gave him a call. The man was really, really, really nice. And um, yeah, he said, yep, we have it in stock. I can ship it to you straight away. And I was like, excellent. You know, I went without a hitch. Um, bought the eight pin decoder for it, eight pin Hornby decoder, so it would have no issues at all. That was the problem. Uh, so it arrived and um, the lights didn't work. So I thought, hmm, this is really odd. So I tried fiddling around with the with the pickups that, uh, because basically when you take the roof off, when you take this unit off here, there's some metal copper pickups that point downwards onto some, onto like plates down here, onto like green plates. And uh, there must, be, must have been something faulty with them. So he gladly took it back and he went to the trouble of shipping it all the way back to China for me. Um, and it was fixed and it came back within two weeks. And I was really, really impressed with him. So excellent customer service from the Pickering model shop there. But this particular model does work and um, it does work very well. So we're going to hook it up to some Mark IV coaches now and uh, we're going to see how the lights work on it. Okay guys, here it is. Unfortunately, I can't show you it running because I don't have the power car with me. That's still with His Majesty Intercity 82. So as you can see, the lights do look very, very good indeed and really do stand out on the model and really make you forget about all of the other detail that's been, that's been forgotten. And, you know, lights on a model are just very, very special to have. So as we can see, they're the tail lights. So if the unit was going like that, then those will be on. But if we turn on the front lights, Oh yes people, it has a cab light. It has a cab light. Unfortunately, you can't turn that off and that is on all the time. But for night running, that is absolutely spectacular. So as we can see, we have just a, sing a single dim light on the left side and we have a large, a large fog light on the right and a dim light as well. Um, I'm not too sure about why it's like that. Uh, I'm sure it's correct and everything, but I just don't know why. <laughs> I just don't, I have no idea why. But it does look spectacular. So if we just move it backwards a little bit, if the model was, or the train was coming towards you, those would be on. And it just looks fantastic. This was my first ever model with lights and was blown away. <laughs> it was literally blown away. It looked absolutely fantastic. And it still does, I'm sure you'll all agree. So if we just do a very quick side-by-side -side comparison of the two models, we can see that the, <laughs> the difference in detail is very, very plain to see indeed. So you can see why I guys went to the trouble of um, trying to obtain this particular model on the right as opposed to using the one on the left. And you, can, you guys can clearly see there isn't that different of a shape between the Mark III and the Mark IV. You know, I'm certain in real life they were designed at pretty much the same time, but with only subtle differences because these, these ones here were designed for East Coast mainline operations and um, were designed for 140 miles an hour because that's what the Class 91 was designed for. So those were designed for 140 miles an hour. These have a maximum speed. Those ones over there, the Mark III DVTs, have a max speed of 110 miles per hour. So they were, they were for secondary routes, basically, and for charter relief trains on like the West Coast Main Line and even the East Coast Main Line sometimes. So those, these are usually hauled, either pulled or pushed by uh, Class 60s, Class 66s, um, done by charter relief trains. But we're just going to pretend that this is a Mark IV at the moment. This is a Mark IV, people, not a Mark III. And uh, this will be running with the Class 91 when it eventually arrives with a super detail Mark IV rake. Uh, I have three coaches at the moment and I've put some custom, some custom gangways on so to block out the gaps between the coaches and fitted them with some disc wheels and who knows maybe in the future I might fit some lights because taking the roofs off is quite easy. So guys, thank you very much again for watching this review. I expect many more in the future as I do have a new steam locomotive ready to review. So stay tuned guys and see you later.